Look at the picture. See the skull. Visible Frankenstein controls. The Brain Thoughts Broadcasting Radio. The Frankenstein Earphone Radio. The latest new skull reforming to contain all Frankenstein controls. controls. Today's episode of Frankenstein Control is brought to you by Burps Bees. Burps Bees? Yeah. It's the only bee that burps on your lip. Ew. Ew. He comes on over, he's like, cute, adorable little bumblebee, you know? But then he lands on your lip, and that's already a little spooky, and then he goes, <laughs> I would be terrified he's going to sting sting me on the mouth, and I would have a giant, like, Klasky Supo face. Oh, it does. Does it provide any benefit to you, the burpist? Well, that's what I was saying. He turns you into a Klasky Chapeau character. Oh. Yeah, he burps the, the burp bee. He comes over, he burps on your lip, flies away, flutters, flutters away, and then uh, your lips migrate down to the bottom of your chin, <laughs> and it becomes swollen and brightly colored. It pans out, and you see the slider from the character creator from Skyrim. It says mouth height, and it goes all the way to the <laughs> lowest. <so>. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, you'll uh, you'll look like a um, you'll look like a sturgeon. That's, yeah. that's also like if you if you do a Nord, if you make a Nord character and you slide the mouth all the way to the bottom slider, that's that's how you make Mads Mikkelsen. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Frankenstein Control, everybody. The only podcast sponsored by Mads Mikkelsen the Nord. <laughs> I'm your host Taylor Russell. In front of me is Ada. I'm Ada, and I've been isekai'd into the world of Fable 2. <laughs> and to the left of me, as always, is B-Rye. I'm B-Rye, and uh, the other day I wasn't trying to make Mads Mikkelsen, but I was sort of trying to make Peter Stormare. I was uh, playing around in the character creator like I do, and I was... You're trying to make Stormy Daniels? No, I, uh, I was trying to make a uh, character look like um, one of my favorite crime boys from cinema... Guillermo Grimsrud from Fargo. Who Guillermo played... del Toro? Yes. <laughs> Guillermo del Toro, who is Dead Man in Death Stranding. That's true, except not his voice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a very, a very obviously not his voice. And they like mo a different actor with Guillermo del Toro's likeness to relative weird. success. Yeah. It was a bit uncanny, but in the way that it's like... That's clearly not your voice. Can I take a shower with you, Sam? <laughs> Can I? Sam, we need to take a shower together. <laughs> Are you in the showers? I was um, I was trying to make um, Peter George Stormare. Soros. Yeah, George, George Soros, yes. The, <laughs> the, the billionaire boogeyman behind all progress. <laughs> yes, and that's that's what you are, really. In, in any Elder Scrolls game, you're a billionaire boogeyman <laughs> behind all progress. Oh my god, I mean, where's the lie? Like, stepping into any of those games, the world was in this stupid stasis because everyone in that universe is a dipshit idiot and you're the only person capable of getting anything done and in turn that gets you a lot of money just because the economy of those game worlds is fucked up anyway. Yeah. So you become a thousand dare yeah. and uh, you become a rich motherfucker who makes everything, literally everything happen. One of my And most... if you weren't there nothing would, would occur. Yeah. Why must I be forced to be the Christ figure? <laughs> is, there no, is there no one else willing to bear this cross? And then they did that in Oblivion, and, and Scene Bean turned into a goofy dragon. He did. <laughs> <laughs> Even in the fucking video games, Scene Bean can't have shit. I'll be back with, uh, I'll be back later, except I won't, with uh, 80% of the voice acting budget. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, though. <laughs> Fucking Sean Bean shows up in Oblivion, and Gene they... Bean. Yeah, good old Seam Bean. That's why... That... I thought Patrick Stewart got 80% of it. He he got, uh... It was, it was, it was 60-40. <laughs> and then, that's why they had to get some lady that they found at the metro, like a, a metro stop, to be, like, all the Red Guard females. <laughs> oh! <laughs> it's true, though. <laughs> She was not a talented voice actress, mm. and it was silly. It's okay. They made up entirely for it with uh, we Wes. Wes Johnson? Thank you. I was about to say Wes Craven. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, Wes Johnson's great. He fucking announces for Capitals games, and it's the best. Your Washington Capitals. Your... Good people of Washington, D.C. Yeah. Here are your Washington Capitals! And you're like, oh my god, it's the Imperial Arena! I'm going to get murdered by an Argonian. Just kidding. Whoa! I win. I love Oblivion. 
Oh, yeah, it's fucking great. Like, I, I played it a lot recently before I installed one mod too many and ruined everything. <laughs> uh, literally ruined everything and lost everything. And I was just like, oh, I, was, I guess it's time I stop playing, I suppose. I'll do something else. Uh, but in that time, like, and it's it's just the vibe, man. It's like, great. Th- that's what I get out of it. Oh, is yeah. It's the vibe. It's nothing but vibes in that game. Because the gameplay isn't too stellar at all. Uh, you know, it's a basically a launch title for the 360. Yeah. Basically. I don't think it actually was, but it feels like it. Yeah. And, like, you know, nothing about it is too overly spectacular, but, like... You gotta remember that, You like, play that shit and you're vibing. Coming, it's just vibing. <laughs> coming off of... Coming off of playing Morrowind all the time, like, Oblivion felt like you were playing The Lord of the Rings, the extended edition of the video game. Like, <laughs> okay, coming from that, from, yeah. From that point of view, now looking back, it, you know, I, I'm, I'm the old guy from that Family Guy bit turning the light bulb on and off. And I saw this at the World's Fair in 1920, I shit myself. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... And, and I'm coming at it from a perspective of, you know, there's been a lot of good open world fun game, you know, shit like that since. Mm. But there's something about Oblivion that's just so, like, low stakes, but in a good way. It's just fun. You're And, like, it's, it's, it's kind of a summary kind of game, you know? <laughs> it, like, feels summary. You Summer spend vacation. So much fucking time All in the- goddamn Skyrim. It's just so snowy. And shitty. And- yeah, you're just like, oh, it's so really gray around here. You go to fucking Tamriel, and shit is, like, really gross, green, and bloomy because it was a launch title for the 360, yeah. so it looks like shit. I actually don't <laughs> think it looks like shit. But- I, I, I'll, I'll die on that hill. I actually think that some of the... Um, the character models look like shit. The you character models look like dog shit. Yeah, you can't fight me the on this one. The character models look like moon-faced, uh, <laughs> horrifying, like, er- reboot monstrosities. I've always said they look like sentient discarded Walmart bags. They do. <laughs> it's it's horrible. They, they're hideous. But, but the, yeah, the world, I don't know, the like, the environment, okay. the environments are very nice. I, I like, the, you know, they have, like, the, you know, In, like, an old video gamey houses. kind yeah. of way. It does feel super summery. It feels all green and fun and warm. Mm-hmm. And I, it's probably also because I have a lot of memories of playing it on summer vacation from college. And, and just, like... Like, all the townsfolk are wearing sandals. And, and, and when I was saying things were low stakes, yeah. like, you know, things are just so involved in Skyrim. Yeah. You know? Like, every place you go to, like, is all wrapped up in the main plot, and you yeah. gotta worry about mechanics this, that, and the other, and, like, I don't know, it just feels so, like, they're trying to push a narrative really hard, while in Oblivion, like, 90% of the discoverable places that you just go to and goof off and kill things in, it's just a fun cave. Yeah. It's just a cave to those special stories. It's just achy caves. It's just there for you to you find. You just go inside a nasty cave and you kill a gobble and you get out. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty fun. Some of the caves got, like, unique features and cool shit in there. Yeah, yeah. There, there's and... always, like, you know, you'll find something of interest in all of those. Well, not all of the little caves. Sometimes it really is just you go in a stinky cave, kill a bear, and leave. Yeah. And that's it. But then sometimes you go in there and you're like, oh, there's a weird-ass puzzle in here. And like, and it's just there for you to find. And it's just there for you to find. You go, oh, it's fun. Hmm. And it's, and then of course the the infinite procedurally generated oblivion gates, which sound like a drag and suck. There, but like, I hated them. I've hated every time I beat the main story, and there's like the one where you you eventually have to like close one in front of every city. Oh, yeah. And by, like, I am, I am, like, a quarter of the way into that quest, I'm done with it. I don't know, like, I, I kind of fell into a stride with it, like, I kind of got, I got to a point where I was really enjoying just fucking around in Oblivion Gates and just be like, (laughs) alright, I just get really bored really quickly in there and I want to leave and there's, like, 80 hours of shit you gotta do and then it's like oh you gotta unlock the tornado gate and the landslide gate and they're all in different <laughs> fucking towers on different fucking levels and a bunch of assholes who look like Darth Maul in a bathrobe are gonna shoot spells at you and probably also I should probably also note that I downloaded a mod that changed the leveling system a little bit mm. so that like you could level up shit beyond a hundred yeah. And so I had like 200 acrobatics <laughs> and I was just jumping everywhere. Oh, yeah. And There's, I was like, "Wee!" There was an old technique back on the 360 before the, you know, the era of console commands and easy mods mm-hmm. uh, where you have to get the stupid shoes, the the, the bouncy shoes, Spring Heel Jack, the Spring Heel yeah. Jack boots from that one Thieves Guild quest and then you wear them while doing a quest for um 
the Argonian lady who runs the Mages Guild in Breville, where you get transported into a dream world and it unequips all your clothes. Um, but if you wear, and it re-equips them all when you come back out of the dream world, but if you do that quest while wearing the spring heel jack boots, it permanently applies the 20, the, like the plus, the insane buffed acrobatics yeah, that yeah. it gives you. Uh, so then you can go up to like, in, in the vanilla game, exploiting that glitch, you can go up to like 150 acrobatics or something. Yeah, you jump just real high. Fly over Caldera mm-hmm. pretty much, <laughs> and it's fun. There was another glitch that you could do that allowed me to like clone some like acrobatics onto different items mm-hmm. or some shit. I don't know. This is back way back in the day, like beyond the normal ba- bounds of the the game as it was on the 360. Yeah. And I got so much acrobatics, and it was just so fun to just and like jump places. Yeah, it was and great. It was a lot of fun, and like the game's just kind of fun for just goofing off, having a goofing good time. A bandit shows up and goes, "Give me your money," except like. It's it's oblivion, so it's extra jarring and funny when you get robbed. Your money, your, your life. Because <laughs> like you're just walking around and your camera just <laughs> like breaks your fucking neck, whipping around to this goofy little like uh, Khajiit who always has his eyebrows so low and angry that they're clipping into his face and yeah. his covering his eyes, and he's like, "Your money or your life," and you're like, "Ah, time to die, Mister Man." And I <laughs> I do use a bit of dialogue from those guys in my everyday life, like my my everyday lexicon all the time oh yeah where if you um if you told them like no i'm gonna fight you uh like no take it from me if you can or whatever and they would go easily done i, I do that all oh. the time. Like, uh, <laughs> easily problem. done um i had fun with a spellcraft in that game too that's definitely a thing that i miss oh from God. oblivion that skyrim just didn't have which yeah, is a shame because... well, well it's also not a shame because like it's very easy to fucking bust that game wide open i was gonna say it, <laughs> it, it my my favorite ever exploit of that of course which is the death spell mm-hmm. drain health uh it's drain health a hundred points on you could do touch and target so you could do a touch version or a, a, a shooty version and if you had it just, like, do 100 points of damage, but, like, for a fraction of a second, mm-hmm. for some reason, nothing in the game could withstand that, even, like, high-level guards and spider daedra and shit. <laughs> and it was, just, it was just a one-hitter quitter. It just killed everything in that game. <laughs> like a wow! And, uh... You could- I don't... I didn't make the death spell, but I found it very fun and, and cool to just, like, as I was leveling up in my magics, you could, like, stack like, different elemental shit together into, like, one spell. Yeah. And, like, you know, it won't let you make this many points in just fire, but you Mm. could do the same amount of points in, like, three different kinds of elemental damage in one spell. And, like, that's how I would get death spells. Mm. And it was just kind of fun. It is fun. Never fuck with the AoE spells, though, because there's way too many ways that a friendly could get hit by accident, and all of a sudden the whole town thinks you're a piece of shit and wants to kill you. My, I, I exclusively... Which, I mean, honestly, you're just flinging AoE fire spells. That kind of does make you a menace in my book. I exclusively used AoE spells when I was just going to fuck around, and I went to the Arcane University, and I'd make one that did, like, a huge amount of... AOE damage, and then I'd immediately leave the like the spell cast the spell making house, uh-huh. and, and turn right to where like all the mages guild apprentices are all clustered together on a bench for one of their lectures. <laughs> Save your doing, game and go whack whack, <laughs> and then like f- you know five different layer like layered of the ooh. And, like, <laughs> they all get killed. Hold on, wait, uh, everybody, uh, get a noise ready. Okay, one, two, three. Ah. <laughs> It sounds like that. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> but layer it over twice, so it's extra janky and weird. Yeah, I fucking love that game, man. I, I highly recommend if you can go back and go back to to Tamriel for a hot second and and have a good time. You won't regret it. I don't. Cyrodiil, like sorry, not Tamriel is the wor- the country, right? Yeah, and then uh, Cyrodiil, Cyrodiil is, is the, the province. The, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tamriel is the continent. Yeah, go to Cyrodiil, folks. It's I a lot of fun. I, I I recommend it. Have either of you seen the uh, by Talos, this can't be happening meme? No. Uh, <laughs> it's just something that people will respond to, will respond with to something like, oh, I hope this thing isn't broken. By Talos, this can't be happening. <laughs> no, I haven't seen that. Uh, I I hadn't seen it anywhere except, except for like this one blog, and I finally got the explanation from it. Because... Um, it's like Talos is a 
D- is a god. Is, is a Dal- uh, yeah. yeah, in Elder Scrolls. But apparently in the game, they don't actually say that. They say, like, by the gods, this can't be happening. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, that does sound familiar. Uh, but Talos <laughs> immediately, like, you, when you're talking about it, like, you know, in an environment where Skyrim isn't immediately being talked about, you kind of do need to fill in a detail and a quick shorthand for that is to just name drop Talos. Yeah. Because yeah. um, everybody who's played it has walked by Heimsker and going, yeah. Oh, the glory of Talos! But fucking Heimsker. There's this post explaining it, and uh, or like the origin, and they're like, I swear they'd never actually say this in the game. And someone's like, yeah, they don't. This, this phrase came from a RuPaul roleplay blog. Okay. Where, I was not expecting that. Where someone, no. Where someone left... <laughs> where they uh, they left their husband <laughs> in a cage for two weeks and they died. <laughs> in Skyrim. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> By Talos, this can't be... And I had to look it up because it's... You know, Tumblr is like that. It's, it's absolutely plausible that some user left their real-life partner in a cage, and then they died. <laughs> <laughs> it is Tumblr. Yes. I just pictured oh, someone Christ. having a particularly disastrous... No, it's good. Like, the, the, you know, they're coming out on, on the runway in RuPaul's Drag Race, and they have a particularly disastrous wardrobe malfunction, and RuPaul herself goes, By Talos, this can't be happening! <laughs> I fought mud crabs more fearsome than you. Uh, now, that, now that's an episode of RuPaul Drag Race I'd watch. I fought mud crabs more, more fabulous than you. <laughs> <laughs> no, just they all have fucking Oblivion dubbed over voices. Oh, okay. And they um, all start fighting each other. That'd be great. <laughs> the death spell, the best thing about it was that it would kill people so fast the game would take a moment to realize they were dead and disable all their scripts. Mm-hmm. Like the body would fall down, they would they would you know be dead, but uh, sometimes if you did... like. If I killed somebody else near them, a dead body would go, Such violence! So, <laughs> by the gods, someone's been murdered! <laughs> someone's been murdered! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Death Spell, uh, by the way, was a great way to do the uh, Imperial Arena gladiator fight. Oh my god. Every single time, Wes Yeah, Johnson, all these combatants get hyped up. Wes Johnson would be giving it his all, you know, the, Let's see who triumphs! Yeah. You know, and then they just run at me and, Death spell. Ah! Turn around, walk away. Yep, turn around, walk away. <laughs> Who will it be? And you know, you get the idea that the people in the stands are like, "Not this asshole again." We want to see an actual fight. <laughs> <laughs> he just shoots you. The saddest thing in the arena was the Great Prince's quest line. Oh yeah, you ruin his fucking life and kill him. Yeah, it sucked. <laughs> There's no good ending to that. And he's a good guy too. Like he's I wish the they... nicest character in yeah. the whole arena. I wish they made him like a fucking dickhole or something. Yeah. But no, he was a cool guy who's like, I'll teach you some sweet moves. Good luck out there, buddy. Oh, by the way, uh, I uh, don't go looking into my family history. It might ruin my life. And you look into his family history, and it ruins his life. Yeah. What's his he, family history? Yeah, uh, is that he's the son of a vampire, and he's like, you know, he finds that out, and he's like, I'm the son of a vampire, I'm a freak, a freak! And then he just, like, you fight him in the arena, and they say he, like, gave up or whatever, but, yeah. like, he still fights you. No, he, 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 he won't, if you do that quest and he finds out he's a vampire, he won't hit you. Wait, really? Yeah, if, if you just go into the arena. I guess that's just, just like, glitched out for me every time. I don't want to live anymore. Just fucking do it, basically. Wow. Yes. Well, that's that's what the dialogue in the game led me to believe, but I guess that fucking script never worked for me or some shit. I, well, I mean, he, he wasn't going to get the chance anyway, because I used the death, death spell. spell so quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, poor great prince, man. All he wanted to do was give you some hot tips and cool tricks on how to fucking and fight like, people, and then you ruin his goddamn existence. You end else, that man's whole career. <laughs> everyone else in the arena is a major shit heel to you. Mm-hmm. Like, everyone's like... I'm not gonna learn your name. You'll be dead in five minutes. Who the fuck do you think you are coming down here? And the Great Prince is the one guy who's like, Hi, you're the new fighter down here. I'm the Great Prince. If you need anything, just uh You know, he's nice. It's cause he's, he's the one person who's nice to you. That's the, that's the game blackpilling you about yeah. nice guys finishing last. That's what's going on. The game... <laughs> 
Someone oh, at Bethesda um, is an incel. Speaking of knights, we were watching... Uh, knights into Dreams? No, we were watching Adventure Time, and there was a Green Knight reference. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. There's, he yeah. straight up comes in and goes, I am the Green Knight, and pulls out a battle axe. Oh, like, damn. you get to keep this, but all you have to do is hit me. And he cuts Does his head off, and it's, he just picks his head back up. Does he jizz on Jake? <laughs> Uh, he, well, he sprayed plant matter everywhere. <laughs> that is true. There's b- chlorophyll, or as I like to say, borophyll. I call it plant cum. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna sound really gross on the mic. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> that reminds me of that. Uh, have you guys seen that video of the cat who smells the thing and it goes? <laughs> It's <laughs> yeah. like one of my favorite videos. It's hysterical, objectively. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so, I've been pondering about a little exercise mm-hmm. for us. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Um, Jumping to jacks. So, uh, uh, guys. Uh. <laughs> International man of mystery James Bond is coming to invade Frankenstein Control HQ. Uh-huh. What what obstacles do we lay down to to make sure this 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 spy this super spy from MI6 doesn't get us? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is make him sped suit Bond, so he uh, <laughs> can't hit me, and I can pretty much just stand there while he shuffles around and misses. <laughs> yeah, just trap him in a spacesuit. He can't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> How do you get him in the spacesuit? Uh. Put a free spacesuit out with the words free spacesuit, James Bond. <laughs> Wear me, it's fun. I didn't get to be top agent by ignoring an opportunity like this. He puts it on his, <laughs> and his IQ goes down to single digits. <laughs> okay, so inside jokes, notwithstanding, inside jokes about a stupid game that literally one person outside of the people at this table has played. <laughs> <laughs> What other what what obstacles do do we set up to does, keep? Does it have to be stuff that's in the house currently? Like, do we have time to go to Home Depot and buy like a nail gun or okay, something? Okay, we have twenty four hours. Oh, we, we know James Bond is going to come for us. So we have twenty four hours to set up our our house <laughs> in such a way that James Bond can't get us. Is this like new? Uh, you know, high tech, unstoppable Daniel Craig, James Bond, or is it sort of goofy old '60s like Sean Connery, James Bond? Oh, what's this? What's the ugly guy's name? My from Octopussy, my favorite James Bond movie. <laughs> and I'm I'm not joking. That's my favorite James Bond movie. Yeah. Oh fuck! What's his name? Because I'd love that. I I want that Bond to try and get us most. Um, fuck. Hold Chris on. Evans. No, <laughs> not Chris Evans. I swear it's Roger like, Moore. Roger, Roger Moore. Moore. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Roger, J- Roger Moore, James Bond is coming after us. But you know what? For for purposes of impressions, because we all know that's going to happen at some point, Well, it's the Sean Connery Bond coming after us. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm going to lure him into a swimming pool somehow where I will be wearing a diving suit and try to shoot him with a spear gun, because I'm sure that'll work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll name, uh, we'll name B-Rye Stingy. <laughs> Cool. Uh, I'll get a attractive <laughs> '60s lady and put scorpions in her in her underwear. Oh my god! So when he inevitably tries to fuck her, the scorpions will come out and sting him on the pee pee. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me why the scorpions won't attack the lady. She oh. she's she's friends with the scorpions. So they they know not to attack her. They're trained scorpions because <laughs> you can absolutely train a scorpion. She, it is not without the it, it is not outside the realm of plausibility for the James Bond films to have some woman who has some pheromonal control over deadly insects. Yes. That, she's you know, she's trained the stinging insects to only sting penises. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like demonstrated with like a hot dog yeah. or something beforehand. <laughs> Because you always need to see it demonstrated before it's sprung on James. Yeah. Hugh has like a uh, friggin' Oscar Mayer Frank and he looks out of the bag <laughs> and then like he stings it with a scorpion venom and it just violently explodes like an M80. Really quickly. <laughs> Imagine if that had been your dick, James. What do you think about that? And he's like, oh, sh- sh- uh, uh, yes. <laughs> So what would you do to stop him? <laughs> what would I do to stop James Bond? Well, first off, I like to think that the uh, the pool, the the pool idea. Uh, first off, <laughs> James, James Bond is just a sim. You gotta get knock him into the pool. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go in the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> I've nowhere to go. I'm fully trapped. What do I do? <laughs> Q, get me out of here. 
<laughs> oh no, it's Drew Carey and he won't leave. <laughs> Q, Q, I'm trapped in a pool with, with Drew Carey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> they were, we're trapped in a building and they keep shutting off fireworks. <laughs> the building's burning down. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, uh, but, uh, so the, the pool idea, though, you can't, you can't break physics and take away the ladder, so he can't escape. Uh, but, I mean, this is James Bond we're talking about. This boy already hopped the fence in his frog suit, and he's, <laughs> he's swimming around in the pool. And I, I get the feeling that, like, this is James Bond we're talking about. He's probably pretty good at being lucky enough that the, the spear gun spear just goes like, Phew! And, like, zooms past him with a bubbly stream. Yeah. And then he, he gets out of the pool, <laughs> and since you're the one who shot him, I guess James Bond, like, da 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 you guys get in a fist fight. Yeah. And you, uh, you're you're swinging wildly at him, and, like, mm-hmm. since you're B-Rye in a James Bond movie, that means you're, like, seven feet tall. Yeah. I'm, I'm just played by Richard Keel. <laughs> 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 so B Rai is played by Richard Keels, like swinging at you, swinging at him like Frankenstein, doing, doing like very, very like telegraphed wide arc punches <laughs> that are uh, s- slow in coming, you know. But you are the big guy of the movie, so that means that he tries and like judo chop you on the neck, and it, and doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't affect you. You just mm. turn and like smile at, at him, and like your teeth are made of metal, I guess. Now oh, his his nose is made his of nose copper. is made of metal. Your, your yeah, copper nose. That's what it is. Yeah, he punches you in the nose, and it doesn't affect you because then the uh, the, the, the fake skin like <laughs> yeah. flies off of your nose and you've got like a, a copper version of Frankie's nose from One Piece <laughs> and you go dun, 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 and like laugh at him and he's like oh, cool copper nose <laughs> oh blimey copper nose <laughs> <laughs> That's what Sean I, Connery sounds like. Yeah, I want the next James Bond to, to sound like a, a football hooligan from Manchester. Just <laughs> slurring, <laughs> drunken profanity, uh, barely intelligible. So they get Jason Statham? <laughs> sure. That's me. Take him to a chippy place and order a, a wet pay barn. <laughs> Pay wet barn. I forget what it is. So I'm I'm trying to figure out a fun James Bondy kind of way mm-hmm. for uh, B Rai's <laughs> copper nose for for copper nose to get defeated by Bond mm-hmm. and and so he can move on into our lair. But uh, what's a what's a fun ironic way to do this? Because you tried to kill him with a spear gun in a pool. Mm-hmm. So what I think will happen is uh, copper nose. Uh, the sun, the sun begins to gleam off of your copper red nose and Bond pulls out a mirror and it shines it into your eye. Mm. So the light from your reflected copper nose goes <laughs> back into your eye and you go, <laughs> and you fall into the pool. <laughs> and land on the spear. And land on the spear that had become lodged in the wall. And then I deflate like a pool float. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that does happen. <laughs> and so, James Bond, uh, finally, he's like, yes, and then he fucking takes off his frog suit, and he has his, you know, tuxedo <laughs> under it, and he's like, da 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 and he goes into the... There has to be a, a Chekhov's gun scene earlier where he gets the, the pocket mirror from, like, Q. <laughs> oh, yes. Where they're, they're, they're demonstrating how to use it or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and like, and he's like, no, you see, James, if you whip this out on an assailant and blind him with the mirror, if you reflect light with the mirror directly into his eyes, you could uh, uh, shoot him or something. Yeah, yeah, and then he has to make fun of Q for being an egghead, and then his device uh, fucking saves his life for the yeah. 50th time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, anyway, James is done with that. He goes into our lair. He manages to infiltrate into the bottom door, and there is, is a beautiful beautiful maiden uh wait wait, waiting she's like not so fast mr bond (laughs) fucking sexy music i don't know what that sounds like (laughs) and she's pointing a fucking gun at him and it's like got an extra long barrel kind of like the joker's gun from uh from batman the animated series except like sexy it's sexy it's a curvaceous gun it's a gun that looks yonic somehow (laughs) the gun has tits on it the gun has tits on it (laughs) Like like truck nuts, <laughs> but like it's 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 gun gun hits. It's a double barreled shotgun, and each one of the barrels is a titty. <laughs> and she's like, "Not so fast, Mister Bond." And he's like, Err. And uh, she's like, "Make one more move, and I'll fucking show you my butthole." <laughs> 
And Mr. Bond goes, Ugh. And he's what? like, The only moves I want to make are on you, fair lassie. And she's like, Oh, a Scottish accent, Trish. Oh, sorry. I mean, Tish. Morticia. <laughs> And she starts taking off her undies, and uh, he does, the camera's like, <gasps> and like zooms in, like as James's eyes, he male gazes towards her bikini region. It and is little dotted yeah. lines from his eyes to the... <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 the camera just 70s zooms into her <laughs> bikini region. You see the, the very small, short glimpse of a scorpion tail going... <laughs> Into the like the front of her bikini region, mm -hmm. and he's like, "Oh, something's your foot." He doesn't say that though, because he's James Bond. He's real smooth. But then, uh, you know, she's overcome by his Scottish accent, and he's like, "Are you pretentious lesbian?" And she's like, "Yes, I was." And he's like, "That's damn right." The author of this series is fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's have the sex. <laughs> and then he, uh, the ploy fails because he looks past her all of a sudden and then he shoves her down violently and runs across the room and like starts sifting through Ada's like anime collection and he's like oh they got Lucky Star on Blu-ray <laughs> she's like that's my fucking Lucky Star you 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 weeb you Scottish weeb I'm gonna shoot you with my tit gun but then uh, she she shoots it but it goes and it becomes jammed and then uh, James goes I knew that would happen and then he throws the Lucky Star manga like a shuriken <laughs> yeah dir directly at That's her That's Excel Saga he throws Excel Saga <laughs> he throws Excel Saga at her and it explodes and there's there's no ironic ending to her with the scorpions like stinging her by accident or some shit she just fucking blows up when she blows up she's a robot <laughs> like circuitry and robot parts coming out of her. She he, he, she explodes and then he whips out a katana and cuts her in half. But it's okay for the sensors because it was a robot all along, yeah. so it's oil instead of blood. <laughs> I learned that from Samurai Jack. <laughs> my other favorite Japanese anime <laughs> from my favorite mangaka Gendy Tadakovsky. <laughs> So anyway, he looks determined once again, and he why yeah, we'll just make him the Scotsman. And he da 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 is up the stairs. <laughs> da 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 is a verb. Da 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 up the stairs, and he you know he looks around the corner, and he uses the mirror from before Q's mirror, and to look around the corner, and oh what luck. Uh, he sees the, the laser security system that I have set up. Mm. An elaborate system of lasers that many spies are famous for doing funny flips through. Mm -hmm. uh, and he, uh, he does it. He, he does a bunch of funny flips. And the trap that I have set up for Mr. Bond is that I have a flip-activated machine gun. It wasn't the lasers that tripped it. It was the act of flipping. And I made sure none of my guards were spry enough to know how to flip. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you take down James Bond. Quick, you guys gotta fight. Now it's your turn. You guys gotta find a way for James to defeat my flip, my flip-activated camera machine gun. Um, it, it, it was just a hologram. He had like a hologram, um... <laughs> Uh, projector of him flipping. Yeah. So you're like, oh, Bond is dead, but it's like, not so fast. <laughs> you're a fucking hologram, mate. <laughs> and then he just walks through the lasers and like kicks you in the dick. <laughs> and then you are you explode. Oh my god. <laughs> I had the Lucky Star strapped to my boot. I had Excel Saga in my sock. The Obel Jumbe. <laughs> he kicks me with a big flaming kick. <laughs> and you go flying out the window and a dummy of you uh, lands on the deck. Uh, see, see what a joy it is <laughs> when we put a little <laughs> thought... When we use our imagination we, for ten... When we go into the, the land of make-believe... Mm. <laughs> now, I'm going to make believe me some Rice Krispie Treats. What are you going to make believe yourself, Amy? Taylor, no. Don't eat those Rice Krispie Treats. What? Why not? They're, they're scorpions with copper noses. Oh, my God! <laughs> that are flip activated and they'll sting your dick off if you eat them. Well, it's a good thing I don't know how to flip and I don't have a dick. Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> and then my dick shoots off and it's a missile and blows you up. <laughs> And then uh, the fucking lady music kicks in. Ooh, 
his dick was a missile. <laughs> the entire universe.